so what we're going to look at today is we're going to be looking at something called the Graham Schmidt process. And so the idea here is, is that we're going to imagine we have a basis. Now this basis is made up of a certain number of vectors, say n different vectors. And so what we'll do is we'll think that that basis is going to do what we call generate the space. That is, is that we can create anything within that space using a linear combination of however many vectors are inside of that set. So those like n, n different vectors. Um, now here's the thing about this though. The problem with this is that they may not be really very easy to use these basis vectors. And as we've seen as trying to do like change of basis work and that sort of thing that sometimes basis vectors, while they actually allow us to generate the space, they don't know how to do it efficiently or they don't do it in a really clean way. Now, what we learned about in our immediate previous lesson was these things called orthonormal bases. And an orthonormal basis is where the vectors in the basis, right, are, are all orthogonal and they are also all unit length. So they're orthogonal and unit length. Now, if you think about this, it's really very, very handy because what ends up happening is if they're all orthogonal, you can kind of imagine having a coordinate system in which, you know, you go a certain direction here in this direction, certain direction here in this direction. We know that they're gonna be at right angles, much like the standard basis. And since they're orthonormal, all we've gotta do is we've just gotta basically multiply if we, whatever the scalar is that we multiply by the that basis vector, we know it's going to move or it's going to move our resulting vector in that direction exactly that magnitude, right? Because it's nor it, the vector is normal, and so since it's normal, that means that whatever scalar we multiply by, it actually that ends up being the magnitude of that particular vector. So we can actually, in fact, figure out the magnitude of the resulting vector simply by just adding up the values <coughs> and uh, adding up the components of the vector that we're actually trying to generate. Okay, so it actually ends up being really, really handy. And if you think about it from a visualization standpoint, it makes a lot of sense, right? Our normal way of visualizing coordinate systems, which is basically what a basis is, is to think about like the X, Y, and Z axis. They're all orthogonal. They're standard basis vectors. They're all unit length, okay? And so that actually makes it really easy for us to think about like rectangular coordinate systems, things like that. So what we're gonna do in the Gram-Schmidt process is we're gonna take a basis and we're gonna transform that basis into an orthonormal basis. So basically we're gonna take the vectors that are in the basis and we're gonna transform them into a different basis that actually spans the same space. So it'll be a basis for the same space, but the vectors will now be orthogonal and they will also be um, uh, unit length. All right, let's talk about the process for the Gram-Schmidt process, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna imagine we have a vector space V and V is gonna equal the span, and we have a basis for V made up of X1, X2, X3, so on and so on and so forth, okay? So this actually ends up being um, the, the uh, basis that we're looking at, okay? And what we wanna do is we're gonna generate an orthogonal basis. And the orthogonal basis, we're gonna start out with uh, the first vector that we're gonna have is gonna be x1, okay? It's the vector x1, and actually x1 is gonna equal v1. So there's the first element inside of our orthogonal basis is just gonna be v1. We're gonna put that first vector gonna be put into there. Now I'm gonna take the, my next vector, and that's gonna be x2, okay? Here's x2, let's imagine that's x2. And notice it's not actually orthogonal to, um, to our vector. All right, um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate an orthogonal projection, okay? So I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna create, okay? Um, or I'm going to, in fact, create an orthogonal projection of V1 onto X1, or onto X2, excuse me. I'm gonna take V1 on X2. So this thing here, this length here is P of W, or not W, but P of um, X2. Next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw X2. So here's X2, okay? And what I'm gonna do with X2 is I'm actually gonna create an orthogonal projection onto 
V1. Okay, so I'm going to create, create a projectional uh, orthogonal projection. This is the projection of x2 onto v1, and it's that that projection. And so remember that that projection p of x2 comma v1 is going to end up equaling um, x2 with the inner product with v1 divided by the magnitude of v1 squared, and then times v1. So remember that that's actually going to be that particular uh, particular vector, right? So we're going to create that, and now the orthogonal vector that we're going to be looking for is this one right here. Okay, that's a, that one's actually orthogonal. Okay, it's orthogonal to v1. Okay, and that's going to be called v2. And what that is is that that's basically x2 minus p of x2 v1. So my x, my v2, my second vector v2 is going to now equal v1, um, not v1, but x2 minus x2 comma v1 divided by the magnitude of v1 squared times v1. And that now is a vector that is orthogonal to P, uh, or excuse me, that is orthogonal to V1, okay? And in fact, generates the entire, the same plane as X1 and X2, okay? Right, it's now just orthogonal. So what it's done is it's changed X2 to an orthogonal vector. And the span of V1, comma v2 is actually equal to the span of x1 and x2, all right? So basically, we've gotten, we were gonna generate the same exact space now, it's just that what we've done is we've now made the two vectors orthogonal. So now I've got v1 and v2. Those are my two vectors. Now I need to go figure out how to make v3. So this basic idea is gonna be what we use in order for it to have the entire Gram-Schmidt process. Let's talk about finding now our v3, our vector v3. So V3, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with X3. It's gotta be, a, we gotta have a particular place to start with, with X3. And then what we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna first, we're gonna subtract out um, the orthogonal projection P of um, X3 onto uh, V1, all right? And so what will happen there is we know that this gives me an orthogonal, this is orthogonal to V1. All right, that's the first piece. And then I'm gonna subtract out the orthogonal projection P of X3 onto V2. And doing that, that X3 with the P of V3 at V2, that makes it orthogonal to V2, okay? So basically what we've done now is by, we kind of subtracted off the non-orthogonal parts of um, X3, the ones that are kind of like redundant inside of V1 and V2. And what we're left with then is, is we're left with this vector V3, okay, that gives us the same information, but now is orthogonal to, so it's orthogonal to V1 and V2. Okay, and if I rewrite that, I'm gonna get V3 is thus gonna equal the inner product X3 with, or excuse me, x3, the vector x3, minus the inner product x3 comma v1 over the magnitude of v1 squared times v1, minus x3 inner product with v2 divided by the magnitude of v2 squared times v2, okay? And that now is gonna give me V3. So now I'm like, okay, great, I've got V3. Now it's called a process because this is what we're going to be doing. By the way, one of the things that you can kind of see here, you might wanna see here, is, is you can see that in fact, this piece here, right, is going to end up giving me a linearly independent vector, all right, to V1 and v, uh, V3, all right? And that is, is because 
we're assuming that x3 was a basis vector beforehand, all right? And um, all I'm doing now is I'm subtracting out some scalar multiple of v1 and v2, right? So I should be left with like basically the linearly independent part of x3. That's kind of the idea that you're dealing with here. You're not actually making a, you're not gonna do anything to the vector to make it now linear, to make the set now linearly dependent, okay? That's kind of how that works. So if we think about v4, v4 is now simply going to be equal to, we'll have x4, and then because that was the process, it's gonna be minus x4, inner product with v1, divided by the magnitude of v1 squared, times v1, minus x4, v2, divided by the magnitude of v2 squared, times v2, minus x4, this is magnitude of v2, or excuse me, v3, over the magnitude of v3 squared, times v3. All right, that's v4. We keep doing this, so on and so on and so forth, right, until we get to vn. So vn is going to have, is gonna start out with xn, the last vector in our basis, minus the, um, the orthogonal projection of x4, or excuse me, xn onto v1, minus the orthogonal projection of x, n onto v2, so on and so on and so forth, ad infinitum, okay? And that is the Gram-Schmidt process. And our set, v1, v2, v3, all the way up through vn, is going to be our orthogonal basis. So let's take a look at this, this example. We'll start out with, we're gonna have x1. Um, we wanna find an orthogonal basis for v equals x1, x2, x3, or it's actually the span of those. And we'll have x1 is 1, 0, 1, 0. x2 is 1, 1, 1, 1. x3 is negative 1, 2, 0, 1. So I've got three vectors. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find three orthogonal vectors. So I'm just going to write down what their equations are going to be using the Gram-Schmidt process. So x1 is going to equal v1, or actually, excuse me, other way around. We're going to write v1 equals x1. So we already know, hey, already there, 1, 0, 1, 0. That's in our orthogonal basis. V2 is gonna equal x2 minus, and it'll be the orthogonal projection, so that's gonna be x2 inner product with v1 divided by the magnitude of v1 squared times v1. And then v3 is gonna equal x3 minus x3 inner product with v1 divided by the magnitude of v1 squared, v1 minus x3 inner product v2 divided by the magnitude of v2 squared times v2. And so those are the equations for our inner products. Or excuse me, those are the, those are the equations for our orthogonal vectors. Now our job is just to go in and do them, okay? So I'm gonna start out, I know um, my first vector, v1 equals one, zero, one, zero. V2 then is gonna equal one, 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 minus, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit of scratch work on this side because it's just fine that it's easier. So I'm gonna take, I've got one, 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 dotted with one, zero, one, zero. Okay, so that's gonna be my, my inner product. Okay, and so that equals one plus zero plus one plus zero, so that equals two. And then the magnitude of V1 is gonna equal um, the square root of one squared plus zero squared plus one squared plus zero squared. So that equals just the square root of two. So what I'm left with is I'm left with that um, this is going to then be two over the square root of two squared, right? So that's gonna end up being one times one, 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 or excuse me, minus, sorry, minus 
one zero one zero. So we're gonna take V one, right? Okay. So we took the magnitude of V one squared. We took the inner product of X two with V one. Okay. And now we're gonna do the subtraction. Notice that this is this is equal to one. So we get one minus one is zero. One minus zero is one. One minus one is zero. One minus zero is one. And so now that is our second orthogonal vector and that's V2. V3 now is gonna equal, it'll be, we're gonna first take, uh, we're gonna have um, X3. So X3 is negative one, two, zero, one. All right, so now what we need to do is we're now gonna take V3 times negative one, two, zero, one. All right, and we're gonna subtract. And so first I need to find the dot product of X3 with V1. So if I look here, I've got X3, negative one, two, zero, one. And then my V1 is dotted with one, zero, one, zero. This equals negative one plus zero plus zero plus zero, which equals negative one. And we already know that the magnitude of V1 squared is just equal to two. So this is gonna be minus one half times one, zero, one, zero. Now I need to subtract, I need X3 dotted with V2. So X, uh, X3 again is gonna be negative one, two, zero, one dotted with V2, so note that that's going to be zero, one, zero, one, dotted with zero, one, zero, one, and that'll end up being zero plus two plus zero plus one, and that ends up equaling three. And then we'll take the magnitude of V2 squared. So the magnitude of V2 squared is just simply going to be zero squared plus one squared plus one, zero squared plus one squared, which just equals two. So this gives me three halves, and we're gonna multiply that now by zero, one, zero, one. I made a notational mistake. This actually should be negative one half, right? Because this is a negative, so negative one over two, just to note that, that should be changed. So now this is gonna be, what we're gonna do, I'll do the first subtraction, so this is gonna be negative one plus one half. So this is gonna be negative one half, comma, and then this will be two minus zero, so that's, or two plus zero, it's two. And then zero plus one half, so that'd be one half. And then one plus zero, and that should be one. Then we'll subtract from that three halves times zero, one, zero, one. And so this ends up giving me negative two two, or excuse me, this is gonna then be negative one half, because that's negative one half minus three halves times zero, two minus three halves, so that ends up giving me one half, one half minus three halves, so this is just gonna be one half again, and then one minus three halves, and so that ends up being negative one half. So my orthogonal basis now is going to be, my vector space V can be written as the span of one, zero, one, zero, comma, one, 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 comma, negative one half, one half, one half, negative one half. All right, and if we go through and we take the dot product of each one of them, we do them pairwise, what we should get is we should get zero for each one. So let's check, we get one, zero, one, zero, dotted with one, one, um, it's actually, Right, it's zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. We get zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, great. Take one, zero, one, zero, and we'll dot that with negative one half, one half, one half, negative one half. What you get there is you get negative one half plus one half, and that equals zero again. And I'll let you do the, the, other, the other two for, your, for yourself, okay? So, Gram-Schmidt process, all right? Basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna start out with, take the first vector, that's gonna be the first part of your ortho orthogonal basis. Then we're gonna subtract out the orthogonal projection of your second vector with your first constructed orthogonal vector. So 
the, the notation really is going to matter. Notice, and I did this actually a couple times as I was going through here, so be very careful about this. Notice that what you're going to do to find V2, right, okay, is you're going to be dotting with V1. Not necessarily X1, although they are the same thing, but you're going to be dotting with V1. This becomes especially important when we get down to like V3, where now we're dotting with V2. So you created V2. V2 is not one of your original basis vectors, okay? So you need to make sure that your V2 goes right into there, right? Okay, this V2, that becomes the new V2 that's li listed here. And for V3 and V4, so on and so on and so forth. And the process, right, is just... For each additional vector, okay, you're gonna take, you're gonna subtract out the orthogonal projection of every other now orthogonal basis vector, right? And that's the Gram-Schmidt process.